I could flip it around and say, now that we have a deal, Dan, the, 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 the suddenly slower jobs growth report in the last month notwithstanding, maybe the odds are less that we see a, a cut. Yeah, I, I actually don't agree with Susan. I, I don't what? think I do not. What do you not, mean? I, I do not agree. <laughs> Okay, well, okay, let's hear the argument. Then. Go well. let's go. I because I don't believe that the Fed should actually make the cut right now. I think we are at virtually full employment as we are right now, 3.6%. Right. It hasn't moved. And we have really no inflation. So why should the Fed go into their quiver and pull out that arrow right now? That's I don't the think Fed should be anticipating how many, what's happening what? in the markets in, a, in anticipation Not of only well, you asked what's happening in the market market movement. Wow, what about, yeah. there, was no, <laughs> there was no job growth. I mean, did you see how many jobs were added to well, that 75, job Well, 75,000 jobs were added, Which was and that's going to be revised up. they had anticipated. Forget, expe forget expectation. No. I, th I think that it wasn't as bad a job job report as people think that it was. So retail went down, but you would anticipate that right so now. So no reason for the Fed to cut. Up. We, no I don't think so. He I, you disagree I, strongly. I completely disagree All because right. this is what drives consumer spending. I mean, when you have a cut like this, you know, it, First of all, I mean, this goes back to the president's whole political strategy of, you know, imposing these tariffs, the, the, the boy that cries wolf, um, you know, that wasn't going to have an impact. We knew that people that follow consumer spending knew that it was going to end up manifesting slash have an impact on the consumer later on in, in, in the year. However, this perfect storm of this, uh, this jobs report coming out, uh, the tariffs maybe being imposed, maybe not, and yeah. then the Fed potentially cutting these interest rates. But he is right about this, and I'm not trying to get his, you know, the guys against the gal here, but I, but I will say this, <laughs> Susan, <laughs> that, right, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to sink don't deeper into go, this. Go with right Dan. down the yeah. most no, on Susan, Dan's One of the things it said is that, there, you know, there aren't a whole lot of arrows in the Federal Reserve's quiver, right? I, I mean, agree. There have been 10 hikes of this cycle that go back to Janet Yellen with Barack Obama in the final year. So you take two, maybe, as you said, possibly three of them out of the equation. You don't have a lot of wiggle room there. Not, and no. save it for when you really should do something. Yeah, so back in the 1990s, I think it was 6% interest rates we were looking at when they started their rate hike, uh, rate cutting right, cycle. Right. We're at two and a quarter, two and a half. Right. Not a lot of ammo and dry powder. So, so yeah. that's all that poor Dan was trying to say. Oh, come yeah. on. Don't, don't stand up for him, right, Neil. Right, this should right, be a right. fair Thank playing you, field. But look, it's a deflationary environment as well. No inflation. Right. And deflation is just as bad as high inflation, by the way. And also, don't forget the inversion and the yield curve. Think of the run for safety right now. If things are so great, why are people putting money with the German government and paying them to hold their uh, their money stable? Well, well, let me, uh, this actually, I, I told you what Nancy Pelosi had to say, folks, but uh, this was something the president uh, had, had had said uh, before Nancy Pelosi released her statement, nervous Nancy Pelosi of the Democratic House are getting nothing done. Heatha. Uh, he didn't say Heatha. Uh, perhaps they could lead the way with the USMCA. This is the, the new Mexican deal. Uh, the spectacular, very popular new trade deal that replaces NAFTA, the worst trade deal in the history of the USA. Great for our farmers, manufacturers, and unions. So he's saying they're the ones who are going to be on defense. But I'm saying no matter who you side with here, does it mean that we're not going to get a whole lot done? With specifically anything, what just transpired in the right. last 48 hours? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that they're not going to get a lot done. I mean, clearly Mexico came to the table and said, "Listen, we're going to go ahead and you know come to terms with or come uh, meet the president." See, I don't think they, the, the Democrats and a lot of Republicans thought this would work uh, and and uh, that this strategy would pay off. Now, and, and it probably still will. early, still early. Yes, but there is the notion here that they, they've got to then naturally damn this thing, right? I've got to criticize it. I, I, look, I think now that Mexico, a Mexican deal is in place, I think the president really needs to turn his attention where it should be, and that's with China. To me, that's the key, and that's why the Fed needs to kind of stay back a little bit. Let's see how things work out with China. That's really the big prize. If you're China, does this change your completely posture? I completely disagree with Dan, I completely by the disagree way. with Dan, too. <laughs> because, look, if, if you think of the, uh, this hard negotiating stance with China, that's kind of what brought Mexico to the table. So the Fed's got your back. You have this deal with Mexico, who are now patrolling the borders more tough. And I would almost say China would the, be looking the at this trade thinking, deal oh, with he's Mexico for real. was more important than the trade deal with China. I mean, at this I would point, agree with that. You know, it, I was it's very worried a, about Corona prices going. <laughs> okay, and me, I was worried about the avocados. I don't but you know what's interesting? If you're China, then, and you've worked in that region, do do they respond to that? Do they say, well? Boy, you know, we are on defense here. The United States seems to become a position of strength. Their central bank has all but said, we got your back. Yeah. 
So what do they do? Uh, that's what that's what I, I was saying is that I think when you have the Federal Reserve on your side, you have Mexico coming to the table and doing that with threats of tariffs. I think that kind of solidifies and strengthens the president and the White House's hand in negotiating a possible trade deal with China. Well, I don't want to say I disagree, but <laughs> let's just say that I say think it. that China, well, I think that China is going to play the long game here. And I actually don't expect that China is going to do anything too significantly until they see what 2020 is looking like. Because Dad, if President Trump when... doesn't get reelected, it puts China in a much well, stronger position. You're going to wait out the election? Yes. Yes. Now you're, you're, now you're crazy. Now. No. Yes. And I love you dearly. Uh, Neil, what, what are you doing? What happened with Go. There's no way that China won't be able to somehow come to the table with their own sort of negotiating uh, tactics uh, and, and, and basically so you don't think, meet you the think president where they, he they wants to be they got to do something at. soon. That's what you're they saying. They have to. I All mean, right. Mexico just, just did that. Yeah, and they, you're saying they could just wait it out. They could wait no. it out. I think that's All a right. possibility. No. Neil, Neil, now I know how you feel being so that. unpopular. No. <laughs> you tell me. What do you mean? Now, <laughs> at two, last, Jenna, last word, right. you, they need to find 21 million jobs for every graduate that comes out of China. How do you do that with a stronger economy? And right now their economy is slowing down. Yeah, but those numbers are still pretty good, right? What, six and a half percent down yeah. from 10 a few years ago? Six and a half percent. We would <laughs> for, die for an, something like that. It's an emerging If they're telling the still, truth. They're still developing. Right. Half of the population okay. is under the poverty line. Right. You should be a little nicer to Dan. You, you really should. Yeah. Well, I bought him a croissant the other day. Everyone's talking about it. This 